Output caching middleware has introduced in .NET 7 that is used to enable caching in your application. But let's understand what is caching first. Imagine you have a favorite book that you read often. Instead of putting it back on the shelf after every use, you might keep it on your bedside table for easy access. In this way, when you want to read it again, you don't need to go all the way to bookshelf that saves time and effort. The bedside table acts as a cache for the book. It is just an example. I am not encouraging you to make your room unorganized. In computer terms, caching works in similar way. When you visit a website or use an app, certain data like images or frequently accessed information get stored in a cache on your device. The next time you visit the same website or use the app, instead of fetching everything from the internet again, it quickly retrieves the stored data from the cache, making the loading process faster and more efficient. Output caching middleware is used to enable caching in your application. Output caching can be used in any .NET Core application like minimal API, web API with controller, MVC and Razor pages. I am using controller APIs in this project. Before moving further, let me introduce myself. My name is Ravindra. If you find this video helpful, then hit the like button and make sure to subscribe this channel to get more videos like this. Okay, let's back to the topic. It is the .NET Core application with controller APIs and it is my book controller. This one is get book method, which will return all the books from the database. It also have two query parameters language and title sorry lang and title we can filter the resource by these two query parameters next method is get book by id and we have one more method here which is a post method and it will add a book to the database basically it is creating a new resource so now how to enable output caching in our application it basically needs two simple steps to enable output caching in your application. Step one, add output caches service. Step two, add use output cache middleware. You have to keep few things in mind. Apps that use coarse middleware, use output cache, must be used after use coarse. In Razor Pages apps and MVC apps, Use output cache must be called after use routing. Right now, we just have enabled caching in our application, but it won't work now. For that, we need one more configuration. We need to add output cache attribute above the controller method. Make sure to import this namespace. I have put the breakpoint in the get books method. Now, let's run this application. Let's run this endpoint. Now you can see that it has stopped in the breakpoint. It means we are getting data from the database or server. If we refresh this endpoint again, you will notice that now it has not hit the endpoint. It means we are getting data from the cache store. We can also configure the base policy. Till now we are just using the default configuration for caching by adding add base policy method we can change the default behavior of caching with this configuration we have changed the default expiry of cache to two minutes it means our cache is now valid for two minutes and it will be invalidated after two minutes we can also create multiple policies suppose you need a policy for sorter cache for example you need a cache just for 30 seconds with add policy method we can add multiple policies this configuration adds a policy name expire in 30 s which creates a cache that lives only for 30 seconds by adding properties policy name equals to expires in 30 s we have enabled this policy here now our cache will live only for 30 seconds we need to keep few things in our mind by default 
output caching follows these rules it caches 200 responses only it caches head or get requests only it does not cache the responses that set cookies it does not cache the responses to the authenticated request we can override these default policies but it is not the part of this video let's look at this method get by id i haven't added any output cache attribute here if i hit this endpoint first time it will fetch data from the database but if i hit this endpoint again it will retrieve data from the cache if you don't want to use caching in any endpoint then add a property no stores equals to true let's hit this endpoint let's hit it again it's not storing the data in the cache we can also create separate policy for it here we have created a policy with the name no cache just adding this policy in your method your method won't maintain the cache so let's talk about cache keys by default whole url is the key of the cache including query parameters let's hit this endpoint api slash books and we are retrieving the list of books let's pass the parameter lang equals to english and now we are retrieving the books with language english let's pass the parameter title equals to lol and we are getting the data here with the title lolita all three endpoints are creating separate cache let's verify it and let's call these endpoints again so you can see that we are creating separate cache for each url we can vary the cache by query parameters let's say we just want to create separate case for separate cache for lang parameters only so add a property vary by query keys and assign a string array to it it will have only one value it means we our url is vary by lang now so let's run this application hit the endpoint api slash books it is creating the cache because it is hitting to the brit point let's pass the parameter lang equals to dennis and it is also creating the cache and it is also hit the break point so let's pass the parameter title equals to l o l and it has not hit any endpoint because it is retrieving data from the cache created by the endpoint api slash books so in a nutshell api slash books equals to api slash books title equals to abc or any title and api slash books with parameter lang is unique for every language we can also vary the cache on the basis of vary by header and vary by value but it is not the part of this video you can check microsoft docs for the more information till now what was happening you have asked server hey give me the list of 10 books in return server returns you the list of 10 books second time you have requested for books and you got the list of 10 books but this time not from the server this time you will get it from the cache but you are still getting 10 same will happen for the third time fourth time till your cache is valid you will always get 10 books from the cache so now you have seen the problem because it is increasing the bandwidth every time we have to fetch 10 books from the server every time we are getting the response body of course you are not fetching it from the database but you are still fetching it from the server and it is still increasing the bandwidth isn't it would be nice instead of retrieving 10 books every time or 100 books every time server will indicate you 
with some kind of message like hey nothing is modified now you can rely on the last response that you have stored somewhere on your client machine until you get the new response let's back to the technicality when we apply cache revalidation server returns 304 not modified status code instead of returning full body response it indicates that response is same as the previous one you can rely on the previous response there are several ways to achieve this but we are going to use if none match header for this one and we are going to use e tag for this if client sends an if none match header with the e tag value that he or she gets from the earlier response and the cache entry is not modified then the server will return 304 not modified status code instead of the full response let's set response header e tag to grid so let's hit this endpoint in the response header section you can see we have this e tag header let's copy this value and open the request header section and add a new header here if none match and paste that e tag value which you have copied earlier now let's hit this endpoint again and now you are not getting any response body but you are getting 304 not modified status code and you will not get any response body until the cache is valid okay now let's talk about the cache eviction let's hit this endpoint we are receiving 100 records here so let's add one record with post endpoint now let's call this endpoint again and we are getting 100 records this time also but it should be 101 records because our cache is still valid so it is not going to happen we will we will retrieve the 100 records because in our case in our cache we have only 100 records but it should not happen whenever we add any new data related cache entries should be invalidated automatically let's take let's take another example suppose we have updated the book with record id equals to 100 if we hit the endpoint api slash book slash 100 again and if the cache is still valid you will get the older data not the updated data or if you have deleted the record with id 100 you will still able to load the data with id 100 from the cache so that should not be the case whenever we add update or delete a record the related cache entry should be deleted automatically now you understand the problem let's see how we can solve it but first i am going to delete this last entry that i have created earlier from the database now we are good so cache eviction is the solution for this so let's take a general idea behind it whenever we add update or delete the book we need to delete cache entries for these two endpoints below api slash books get endpoint and api slash books slash get endpoint now we will create a tag and put the endpoints get api slash book and get api slash book slash id under the tag tag book take a look on the diagram if we delete the cache or evict the cache for tag book all related cache entries will be deleted at once let's see how to do it practically first and foremost we will create the tag so there are various ways to do it let's focus on this one let's add this new policy with name evict add a tag tag book to it let's add this policy to get books method and this get by id method also add the parameter cache of type out i output cache store now how we will evict the cache entry so this evict 
by tag async method helps us to evict the cache entries by tag name so whenever we add the new book all the cache entries related to tag tag book will be deleted automatically so let's run this endpoint api slash books and here we are retrieving the book from the server let's hit this endpoint again api slash books slash 100 and we are getting the book with id 100 if we refresh this endpoint you can see that we are getting this data from the cache now let's add a new book here so just just is this endpoint now hit this endpoint it hits the breakpoint means our cache is invalid now so let's hit this endpoint also and you can see that it also hits the breakpoint it means this cache is also invalid now so now you can see that how easily we can evict the cache entries resource locking by default resource locking is enabled to avoid the risk of cache stampede and thundering herd let's see what those terms are first cache stampede also known as cache invalidation storm occurs when cached values for particular resource expires and multiple requests are simultaneously triggered to regenerate or recalculate the value this can happen when a cached item time to live ttl expires or it gets evicted from the cache thundering herd is a similar problem that arises when multiple processes or threads are waiting for a particular event or resource to become available when the resource become available all waiting processes or threads are awakened simultaneously resulting in an overwhelming and redundant influx of requests to disable locking we need to call set locking false method when creating a policy high output cache store is used for storage by default it's used with memory cache. We don't recommend I distributed cache for use with output caching. I distributed cache does not have atomic features which are required for tagging. We recommend that you create custom I output cache store implementation by using direct dependencies on the underlying storage mechanism such as redis i have took this reference from the microsoft docs for this so you can check out the microsoft docs for the detailed information about the output caching middleware in asp.net core i will definitely recommend you to check that out so that's it for now see you next time